forward, I'm reminded that we can often look at where we began in life and that can affect who we are. Uh, Maria testified this morning um, uh, as we were looking at our Bible study and, and the word settle came up because we looked at how uh, we can often look at where we're at and we can say that's just who I am, that's how God made me and all this stuff and we get to a point where we settle and that's not what God desires from us because we know that in his word in the book of Genesis, uh, God made us and he saw that we were indeed good. And so we can't settle. Often uh, the hands that we're dealt, uh, the world has told us this the hand you're dealt and you just have to deal with it. But uh, it doesn't matter how uh, you were dealt a hand that you may even look and say was unfair. God wants to know once you know me and you know who I am, how will you finish? I know what your life may look like now, but how will you finish uh, the race? I remember when I was in school, and particularly my first year in college, I was at a junior college. And while at that junior college, I remember having probably some of the most fun I've ever had in my life. It was a wonderful, wonderful year in the world, I would say. I wasn't in the word like I should have been, and I was having some fun. I was playing basketball for the junior college. Wasn't that good, but I made the team because of the war, and they needed some people to play. So I ended up playing. And we traveled all over the place, and I had so much fun that my grades slipped, and they failed, and so did I. And I remember having to get back on track for the second term, and I took six classes, six times three hours a class, 18 hours. That was foolish. I wasn't ready for that. And I remember saying, I need to do something because I'm about to fail out of college. And I remember dropping out of school and joining the Army, and I said, wow, I said, this is not good. And I'm as young as a five from my mother, and I said, there's no way I'm going to disappoint her. And I remember going home and I walked to school because the school was probably from here to ATV at the next corner. So it wasn't too far, it was walking distance. I remember walking home after I went to a counselor and I told the counselor I want to withdraw from all these classes. And the counselor said, are you sure? There's a couple of classes you can still pass. And I was like, no, I'm going to withdraw. I'm going to withdraw from all. Foolishly, I didn't listen to the counselor. I said, I want to drop them all, and I did. But I remember saying I didn't want to disappoint my mom, and I said, well, I have to do something. And so the Army was an option. I said, well, I'll join the military because I don't want to disappoint her. So when I tell her, Mom, I'm not in school anymore, I can say, but I am joining the Army. And I thought that would suffice. Uh, little did I know, my mom wasn't that happy. She said, oh, you're joining the Army. And the Gulf War was taking place. And my brother was already active duty in the Navy, and her words to me was, they already have one of my children, and now they're about to get my baby. Those were her words. Now keep in mind, my mom came up in an era of Vietnam when they were shipping sons and daughters home, and, and particularly sons in boxes with flags draped over them. And so that was her thought. And so I said, wow. And I remember looking at my mom, I said, you know, I didn't finish school, but I said, I'm going to finish. I said, it didn't go well this time, but I'll finish. And she said, I know you will, son. And I remember when I got to Hawaii, my first duty station. Beautiful place. Some of you probably remember the show Hawaii Five-O. Anybody remember that? The young ones won't remember. There was a television show called Hawaii Five-O. And the little guy would say, the plane, the plane. You all remember that and all that stuff? So I remember seeing Hawaii Five-O, and I said, man, I wanted to go to Hawaii one day. It was so beautiful. And I remember asking, God, first and foremost, because I was still praying, I said, Lord, let me get Hawaii. I want to go there. And sure enough, it was like a lottery. There are actually three places you want to go when you're in school. And I put down my top choice as Hawaii. And so the day came when I was just about done with training, and they said, all right, PFC Westy, you're going to Schofield Barracks, Hawaii. I said, yes, I did you lot. And so I get to Hawaii, but uh, the point is that even when I got to this island, this beautiful paradise, my mind was on school because I knew how I started. 
And I started off and it was shaky, but my mind was on school. My mind was on keeping the promise I had to my mom. So the first thing I did, I went to the Education Service Center and I said, how do I get in school? And so I began to track down the process and they showed me where I needed to go. And so within a year, within six months rather, I was back in school. And I continued to go to school. And I continued and I continued. Now don't get me wrong, when I was in school, by this point I figured, okay, if I can get a C, I'm doing fine. I'll see my way to the end. And at a certain point, I figured, okay, I'm getting paid to go to school at a certain point. I began, they were paying me at a certain point to go to school, and I went because of the payments. I said, well, I had different motivations. And so it wasn't until I was almost done with uh, the halfway point that God touched my heart and said, you need to give excellence. You need to give excellence in what you do. So I was moving towards finishing. And so fast forward, I finished the first degree, and that was a bachelor's degree. And when I finished that degree, I was the first one in my family that I knew of, any extension of my family, aunts, uncles, cousins, anything. I did not know one other college graduate in any of my family, immediate or distant. And so when I walked the stage at the Verizon Amphitheater, I remember the excitement of saying, I finished. I finished. I had to go to about nine or ten different colleges. You know, I, I lost count. And I, uh, well, nine or ten years. And it was six different colleges over nine or ten years. And I remember just losing count of the colleges and universities. And I remember people, you're going here for just six credit hours? I was like, whatever it takes. Whatever it takes. I said, I refuse not to finish. And I remember them saying, well, you need a couple more classes. You won't be able to graduate. I said, oh, yes, I will. And I'm going to find those classes. I'm going to get them done. No matter what happened, no matter what obstacles, I'd already made my mind up that not finishing wasn't an option. I'd already made my mind up that I set a goal and not finishing was not an option. After I finished that degree, because this is what God will do to you. God will plant some excitement to do what they say cannot be done. And at that point, I went on and finished a master's degree. And after a master's degree, I went forward to finish a PhD. And I looked back over my life and I said, there was a time where I did not start off well in college. But when I finished college, and I have a couple of witnesses here, not only did I finish a PhD, but I graduated summa cum laude. Oh, yeah. Well over 3.8 GPA. Right? So it doesn't matter how you start. Your start may be rocky, but the question is, how will you finish? How will you finish? Finish. As we look at our scripture today, a word comes out of the book of Acts, if you stand for just a moment. The book of Acts chapter 20, verses 19 through 24. And that word says, I serve the Lord with great humility and with tears and in the midst of severe testing by the plots of my Jewish opponents. You know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. I have declared to both Jews and Greeks that they must turn to God in repentance and have faith in our Lord Jesus. Uh, this word continues. And now, compelled by the Spirit, I am going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to me there. I only know that in every city the Holy Spirit warns me that prison and hardships are facing me. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Amen. You, you may be seated. May be seated. May be seated. Um, as we look at this text, uh, what we find is that uh, the author does not name himself, but external and internal evidence leads to the conclusion that the author was Luke, uh, speaking of this text. Uh, 
But what we do know uh, that as we consider the author, uh, this person has been on a journey, uh, whether it be Luke or any of the other apostles, they had all gone on journeys with Jesus and they had saw quite a bit. And they had saw quite a few successes, uh, but they've also saw their share of challenges. And this scripture lets us know that this person, uh, with humility and tears, um, they were able to serve God with severe testing. Uh, some of you right now, you're going through your time of tears. And you're at a point where maybe you want to give up because you're going through severe testing, meaning that you're going through a time that's undesirable to you. You're in a time or a situation where it's intense and it's grave and you're feeling like you're at a position where you're being grieved. Uh, the testing that you're going through right now you're challenged at every point. But understand this, that when you're going through what you're going through, God is only testing you to prepare you for your testimony. You're going to be able to testify about what God has brought you through. Testing is simply a challenge that will reveal your strengths or capabilities when you're put on the strength. When you're going through some stuff, all the test is to show what's in you when you're going through these things. Will you give up? Will you quit? Will you keep fighting? Satan has a goal, and his goal is to make you quit. He doesn't want you to finish this race. And if you need an excuse, he will give it to you. We have to be able to look at God's word and be able to look at what he's done for those in the past and believe that he'll do it for us as well. Uh, this author here is talking, and he's saying he preached everything that would be helpful to people, and he's taught publicly from house to house meaning that he didn't tire, meaning that he pressed forward, meaning that he knew the significance, meaning that whether it was Jews or Greeks, he turned to God to make sure they knew about the faith in our Lord Jesus. I draw your attention to verse 22 because this word says, he's compelled by the Spirit, he's going to Jerusalem, not knowing what will happen to him there. This takes faith. Some of you, you're going through some things right now, and you're not sure what you are going to face on the road, but you're going to face something. You're going through some challenges, and you're going to have them, but you have to be able to be just like this person here. Keep pressing forward. How will you finish? This person knew that they were facing possibility of prison and hardships. In other words, he knew without a, a, a doubt there was possibly going to be some destitute moment, there was going to be some moments whereby he was deprived of things, some misfortune was going to happen, some trials and tribulations. How are you going to face this? How will you finish? How will you finish? Some of you right now, you're on a journey called life, and you're thinking, will I finish up strong, or will I finish at all? How many times have you been in life and you wanted to throw in the towel? How many times have you thrown in the towel? But I give God the glory because often you'll find yourself throwing in the towel and God will send someone along the way to pick it up and give it back to you and tell you, you keep fighting. Your race is not over. Keep moving. Keep moving. It's not over. One of the most important things we need to understand is, well, in this race, we're not always going to be in the position we want to be. I was looking at one of the people that's considered the uh, fastest men in the world. Usain Bolt. And I was looking at one of Usain Bolt's races. This guy's a, a Jamaican guy. And, and I was looking at one of his races where he got out of the block. He started off and he didn't look too good. And people were in front of him when he took off. They were in front of him. But somewhere around halfway point of that race, he stood up. And as he stood up, he moved forward and he began to catch up with him and he began to pass him. And right at the end, he ducked in and he finished the race. And they interviewed him afterwards. He said, you know what? He said, I didn't start off well. I didn't start off well. He said, I knew that coming out of the blocks, things weren't right. It just didn't feel right. Some of you, you didn't start off well. You may have started off in poverty. You may have started off at the bottom. You may have started off in a situation whereby everyone else's situation around you seemed that it was ideal for their success and yours seemed ideal for your failure. You may have started off with people putting you down instead of picking you up. It doesn't matter how you started out in the blocks like you saying both. He knew what he had in him. God wants you all to know that when you place that word of his within you, you have something that's going to help you to win in the end. 
You have something that's going to help you to get across the finish line. And Usain Bolt said somewhere around that halfway point, he realized that he was still in the race. Some of y'all need to understand that as long as you're still in the race, you have a chance. You're still in the race. And he said that he had to make sure that he dipped at the right time. Y'all know what the dip is. When you're going across the finish line and someone's right next to you and you do like that, he said he had to dip at the right time. Because if you dip too soon, the other person going to dip and beat you. You follow me? You dip too soon, you might fall short. But you got to finish the race. You got to finish the race. I, I, I love race. How many of y'all like to watch a good race out here? Every now and then you like to watch a good race. I was watching several races and I saw one race whereby this person was so far back, people had given up on him. The commentator had given up on him. The commentator simply looked and said, oh, they're so far back and they were watching other folks. I want y'all to understand, there are folks commentating on your life right now. They've given up on you. They've given up on you. They're, they're, they're on the sideline talking about what you're doing in your race and they've given up on you. But the same commentator that gave up on this man in this particular race I watched, the same commentator because he was so far back, he wasn't even in the picture. And some of y'all need to understand you like that. You so, so far back, you ain't even in somebody's sight. You're not even in their picture right now. You, you're not in their view. But this person didn't give up. Know why? Because this person knew that train. This person knew that did everything they could to become a winner. This person knew that they were going to face some obstacles and they were going to face some challenges. And God is telling you all the same thing. You're going to face some obstacles and you're going to face some challenges. But do you know what's inside of you? If you know that you have winner inside of you, you keep running your race. When you know that you have victory inside of you, you keep running your race. No matter what the commentators say, you keep running your race. And if he was able to focus on his race and win, so can you. This person dug in, and no matter what the situation looked like, because too often we're looking at who's in front of us instead of looking at the God that's in front of us. Y'all y'all follow me? We can't look at those people because we lose sight of the goal. And so this person kept running. All of a sudden, the commentator's speech started to change. They said, oh, wow, this person's coming up, but they still have a ways to go. They're still back quite a ways, but, but we do see them. And they kept commentating. They said, well, wait a minute. He's in the thick of things right now. Oh, wow, wow. Well, not only is he in the thick of the things, oh, wow, well, he's moving. He's making a move. I want y'all to understand when you keep believing in God, you're going to make a move. Y'all understand, you're going to make a move towards the finish line. It doesn't matter how you start and where you're at in the race. Are you still in the race? Are you still in the race? This person kept pressing forward, kept pressing forward. All of a sudden, towards the end, it was between this one and one more. And they thought, well, does he have enough stamina to finish? Does he have enough in him to finish? Do know this, that God will give you what you need to finish. This person kept moving forward. They kept moving forward. When it was all said and done, this person crossed the finish line first. But no one seemed to give him a chance. When you're down and out, folks don't give you a chance. When you have fallen, folks don't give you a chance. When it seems like everything is against you, they don't want to give you a chance. When you're broke and disgusted, busted, they don't want to give you a chance. But God says, I know what I've placed in you. I didn't place no loser in you, Julio. God says, I have placed winner inside of you. You understand what I'm saying? Anika, he said, I didn't place mediocre inside of you. I placed excellence inside of you. Tracia, God said, I didn't place second place inside of you. I placed first place inside. This is the God that we serve. How will you finish? How will you finish? Too often we look at our today and think that this is it. Do we not know God says, I am the author and the perfecter of your faith? Y'all understand this. You may have messed it up, but God said, I'll bless it up. I'm still writing your story. Do y'all understand this morning? How will you finish? How will you finish? Oh, I give him glory. How will you finish? How will you finish? As we look in this word a little bit further, the word says, because these hardships are going to be there. The word says, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race. It doesn't matter. Too often we live off of who we want, not who we are and who we're going to be. Your past is all right for history. You're all following me. But what about right now? What are you doing right now? 
What are you doing right now? What have you done for me? What? Lately. Y'all, come on. Come on. Come on. What have you done? And this is what God wants to know. You can do all you think you've done. And God simply says, that was fine for yesterday. But what about today? And what about tomorrow? How will you finish? Lord, you know I was the best. I was on that battlefield for you for 25 years. Well, I need you on there continually. This thing has to continue to go on. And so this person says, my only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me, the task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. Church, when you know what your aim is, you finish. That was a race. I was watching this Olympian. This Olympian had did everything that he could do to prepare for this race. And do know only the best of the best of the best gets a chance to compete on the world stage as Olympians. This person did all that they can do to prepare. This person got in the blocks, and they got ready, and boom, the gun goes, and they're running, and they're running. All of a sudden, oh, he pulls a hamstring. And as he pulls his hamstring, he knows, I'm not going to come across the line first. But his only aim was to finish. He grabbed his leg, and he's shedding tears because the word lets us know that this, this author said he shed tears. Yes, right. Right. Yes. This gentleman shed tears because all the training he has gone through, it came down to a hamstring. He didn't pull it in the world trials. He didn't pull it until he got into the Olympics. Some of y'all need to know when you're on the largest stage if that's when things happen. Right. 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 But the man said, look, he cried this hamstring and he's running and he's crying. Other races kept running. He didn't focus on them. What he focused on was, I have to finish. And he's running and he's limping and he's shedding tears. You can see the tears coming down. Tears of anguish, tears of disappointment, tears of frustration. But he's still running. And his father comes out. One of the people tries to stop him, tries to stop him. He said, move back. I'm his father. I'm his daddy. I got to help him. And he let him out of the way. And the father said, come on, son. Come on, I got you. And he's running with him, and the son is crying and holding on to his dad, and he's crying. And when he got towards the end, he said, I'm going to let you go. you got to finish this race. This is your race. This is your race. You finish. Our father's the same way. Every now and then, we're going to pull up, and we're going to catch something. And something's going to slow us down. But our goal has to be to finish. This gentleman, as he was interviewed, he said, you know what? I might not have come in first, but I came too far not to finish. Came too far not to finish. I might not have crossed first, but I came too far. This may be my only time to get to the Olympics. There is no way I was not going to finish and cross that finish line. Our Father's telling somebody today, you may be going through some tears. You may be going through some anguish. You may be going through some pain. You might not come in first, but I need you to finish. Your only aim should be to finish. Tell somebody about my grace. Tell somebody about my mercy. Tell somebody about my glory. Tell somebody about my salvation. Your only aim, I don't care if you were a drunk. God says, finish up as a holy man. I don't care if you were a prostitute. Finish up as a holy woman. I don't care what your life look like. Finish up the race sharing the gospel. Too often we look about our past and we look at our stumbles, we look at our falls, and we can't finish the race. God says, I released you from the incarceration of your past. The moment that you accepted my son, Jesus the Christ, I gave you power to finish the race. We have to finish. We have to finish. How will you finish? How will you finish? James 1.3, that word says, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Oh, your faith is going to be tested, but how will you finish? Your faith is going to be tested. Every now and then, guess what? I failed the test in this journey for education. Every now and then, you're going to fall, you're going to fall short. Your faith, I don't care how much faith you say you have, every now and then, you're going to fall short, and it's going to take the Father to come and lift you up. Every now and then, you're going to fall short. You can say, oh, I'm a holy man, I'm a holy woman, but every now and then, you're going to look and you're going to start wondering, is it going to be all right? Will I make it? 
Can I finish? Oh, it's so tough. Oh, God, I don't know. Somewhere along the line, your faith will be tested. But God says the more it's tested, it will produce perseverance. Oh, come on. Come on, somebody. It will produce perseverance. So when you go through what you're going through again, you look and say, oh, I've been here. This ain't nothing. I've been here before. This ain't going to stop me. That's all you got, devil? That's all you got? You gonna talk about me to break me down? That's all you got? Call me a bigger name than that. That's all you got? Oh, Jesus. When we know who we are and we know what's in us, this faith will be tested, but it produces perseverance. Do you all know what perseverance is? Perseverance is a steadfastness in doing something despite difficulty or delay in achieving success. You need to look at your situation and say, it might be delayed, but it ain't denied. Oh, come on for a moment. This gentleman might have been delayed on finishing, but he finished. Y'all understand? Oh, Jesus. Perseverance, it simply says that I'm going to persist. I'm going to have determination. I have staying power. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Christians need to have staying power. We need to be able to say, you knock me down, but you can't keep me down. You put me down, but you can't keep me down. You let me down, but you can't keep me down. We need to understand that within the word of God, we got some pick me up. We Oh, come on, somebody, for just a moment. We got some pick me up. Oh, Jesus. I don't need no five-hour energy when I got God. Oh, Jesus, come on for just a moment. Oh, my goodness. Perseverance, perseverance. We're we going to move forward. I, I have to let y'all know that if you got God and he has got you this far by the Spirit, you have to finish by the Spirit. Don't turn away from his word. Too often we're on this journey and we think, oh, wow, God, I, I've gotten this far now. We start letting the flesh fool us. Galatians 3.3 3 says, are you so foolish? After beginning by means of the spirit, you're now trying to finish by means of the flesh. You got to finish the, this, this race. You got to finish it in the faith. Church, I, I just want to make it plain. You got to finish it in the faith because your flesh will fool you. But your faith will not let you down. You have to finish in the faith. You're going to have some mistakes. You're going to have some mishaps, some missteps, and some misfortunes. But you must finish the mission. Y'all understand? I, oh, somebody didn't catch that. I, I, I'll repeat that again. You're going to have some mistakes, mishaps, missteps, and misfortunes. But you must finish the mission. No matter what takes place, you must finish the mission. And what is the mission? The mission is the purpose, goal, objective, and the pursuit and aim that God has placed before you. And that's to share the saving gospel of Jesus the Christ. Oh, Jesus. I'm, I'm getting ready to take y'all to close, but I have to tell you, don't let your past hold you down or hold you back. We must be like Paul and press on. In the book of Philippians chapter 3, verses 12 through 14, that word says, but one thing I do. <laughs> forgetting what is behind and straining towards what's ahead. I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenwards in Christ Jesus. We have to press on. I need somebody to know we have to press on. You've been a liar all your life, but you don't have to keep being one. Press on. You've been a thief all your life, but you don't have to keep being one. Press on. You've been an adulterer for the last 15 years. You don't have to keep being one. Press on. Come on, somebody. You've been thieving for a while. Press on. You don't have to keep being one. Come on for just a moment. You've been depressed. You don't have to stay depressed. Press on. You've been angry. You don't have to stay that way. Press on. Forget what's behind you yes. and press on. Folks keep telling you who you were. Tell them who you are and who you're going to be. Yes. Press on. This is the race. Keep pressing on. I don't care what's behind me. If I listened to who I was, I would be messed up. Y'all follow me. I would be the drunk guy. Y'all follow me. Y'all follow me. I would be the womanizer. I wouldn't be past the PhD Tim. Oh, come on, somebody. Doctor, come on. Come on now. Come on. We have to press on. Not who I was, it's who I am. And who God has made me to be. 
We have to press on. Don't let that past handcuff you. Samson had to press on. Because some of you, you know you messed up out there. Samson messed up. He lost sight of who he was. He lost sight of what God called him to do. Some of y'all need to understand, it was a woman that got Samson off track, right? But some of y'all know some men that got you women off track, right? Oh, Jesus, come on. Maybe I'm preaching to myself. Maybe I'm preaching to myself. I just want to be transparent here. I just want to be transparent. Samson got off track because of a woman, but when it was all said and done, he got back on track. It wasn't what he did along the way, but how did he finish? He simply called out to God, Lord, if you would give me just one more little bit of power so that I can finish this thing. Oh, Jesus, he sacrificed his life. He knew he had messed up because sometimes we talk too much. Oh, Jesus. But Samson finished up. Rahab was a prostitute. Oh, come on for just a moment. This woman was loose. Y'all follow me. But she didn't let that stop her. That was her past. But we know that the Bible lets us know she's in the lineage of Jesus. And she looked at her right now life and said, this is who I am and this is who I'm going to be. She wouldn't have been what she was going to be. Y'all understand that. Rahab got passed. Oh, 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 but look, it wasn't just Rahab. It was also Matthew. Matthew was nothing but old tax collecting hustler. Y'all follow me? That's all he was. That's all he was. Old tax collecting hustler. Didn't nobody even want to be around him. He was such an hustler. They asked Jesus, what you ask the disciple, what you, what your man doing around him? Y'all understand this. Y'all have to understand, but Matthew became one of the 12 disciples. Peter, Peter had an anger issue. Y'all understand that? Peter had an anger issue, and he had a short temper. Anybody out there like that? Angry with short temper? <laughs> Julio said, hey, here we go. All right. That's the only way we're going to fix it. We have to be able to identify our illness so that the doctor can treat it. When you go to the hospital, the doctor wants to know what do you think wrong with you so they can begin to isolate and treat your illness. You don't go to the doctor and show up and they say, okay, Mr. Weston, what can we help you with? Oh, nothing's wrong with me. Oh, nothing's wrong with you. Then I can't help you. Do you think something's wrong with you? Yeah, I think I got a little issue that we can work. Oh, come on, somebody. We can work on that. Oh, Jesus. And Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus had all kind of issues. Oh, my goodness. Zacchaeus had all kind of issues. The man wanted money. He was greedy. He was thieving. And he was short. <laughs> Y'all follow me? <laughs> he even had high issues. But Zacchaeus didn't let that stop him. He climbed a sycamore tree. He knew Jesus was on the way. And I'm telling you, if you don't believe it, look in Luke chapter 19. He climbed a sycamore tree because he wanted to see Jesus. And he basically said, if I've done wrong, I want to make it right. If I've cheated anyone, I want to make it right. And it didn't matter how his life went, but it mattered how it finished. Oh, Jesus, for just a moment. For just a moment, I'm, I'm about to take you home in John chapter 19, John chapter 19, verse 30. Jesus went through all that he went through, but you all need to understand, it doesn't matter what he went through, even when he was crucified on the cross, it doesn't matter, he knew he had to finish. He knew he had to finish the race. And the word lets us know in John 19, verse 30, it says, when he had received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. With that, he bowed his head, and the word says, and gave up his spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. All the stuff he went through. Jesus. He had been lied on. Lied to. Mocked. Hit on. Spit on. Side was punctured. His clothing were issued out when it was all said and done. The word says he looked to his father after he took that drink, fulfilling scripture. And at that point, he said it's finished. And his head went down and his spirit departed for the moment. He knew that I don't care if I did all this for three years of my earthly ministry. If I don't complete this last and take this drink 
scripture will not be fulfilled. When it was all said and done, he said, it's finished. Can you all imagine that? He bears the weight of the world's sins on his shoulder. Everything you have ever done wrong, he bared the weight of that. So tough the words that he said, Eli, Eli, lost about the name, my Lord, my Lord, why has thou forsaken me? He was 100% human and 100% divine, and he went through some stuff. He went through so much that he asked his father in the Garden of Gethsemane, Lord, if there is any other way, will you take this cup away from me? This cup of sin. He knew it was going to be tough. But he said, but not my will, but that thy will may be done. And when it was all said and done, he said, it's finished. I've done it. I've completed the journey. I've completed an impossible mission. So that those who don't even know me and those who will reject me will still have a chance at eternal salvation. I've become the sacrifice that no sacrifice can be. And I'm finished. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. How will you finish the race? Romans 14 and 11. We must be reminded that we started on our knees and we must finish on them. It is written as surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me. Every tongue will acknowledge me. Someone may have knocked you down to your knees. Stay there and begin to flip this thing over and pray to God and let the world know you may have knocked, knocked me down on my knees for bad, but I got some Genesis 50 20 in me. You meant it for my wrong, but my God meant it for my good and the saving of many lives. Five points and we're done. Finish the mission. How do you finish the mission? Number one, don't make excuses, make moves. Jesus didn't make excuses because if you need an excuse, the devil will give you a thousand. Yes, he will. Don't make excuses, make moves. Don't make excuses as to why you can't be the best Christian you're supposed to be. Don't make excuses as to why you can't commit, why you can't be obedient, why you can't give him the glory, why you can't live out his word. Make moves, Lord. I'm messed up in this area. Send me somebody that's willing to stand in the gap and pray with me. Give me an accountability partner. Show me the way. Humble me if you have to, God. But make me better. Finish the mission. Exercise your faith. So as it gets stronger, so do you. And you're better and able to finish. You can have all the faith in the world. If you don't exercise, you're going to become weak in it. You have to exercise this faith. Like any other muscle. This is your spiritual muscle. You exercise it. The more you exercise it, it begins to produce perseverance. And you can move on. Third. Don't let what's going on around you cause you to lose focus on the end goal. Yes, yes. If that racer would have looked at all the stuff going on around him, if he would have looked at, oh, look at them. They're so far ahead of me. Stop worrying about who's ahead of you. Be concerned about God being ahead of you. Too often, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm obedient to the Spirit. God told me to tell somebody that you're looking at everything else everybody else has. You're looking at where they're at and where you think you should be by this point. You're thinking, oh, I should be at this point because that person's at that point. You're right where God needs you to be. Embrace right now where you're at and watch God start to do miracles in your life. Watch him start to do miracles in your life. I was far behind my classmates when it came down to education. Many of them had the good opportunity to go right to college and finish up in four or five years. It took me 10 years to finish up, but today I'm the only PhD in that entire class. Do y'all understand what I just said? They were far ahead of me. 
but I had to finish. And when it's all said and done, I'm the only PhD of the entire class. The only one. How will you finish? Focus on God in front of you and the goal that he has ahead of you. Number four, don't be deterred by what people think, but be determined to live out what God desires. That word should be live out, not like out. Be determined to live out what God desires. If you're concentrating on what people think of you, you're already in a, a rut. The question is, what does God think of you? And I've already told you in the book of Ephesians, he thinks that you're his handiwork, his masterpiece. Can you all imagine that for a moment? Julio God says, you're my masterpiece. Kathy, he says, you're my masterpiece. Yes, yes. Crystal, God says, you're my masterpiece. You're my handiwork. Patricia, he says, you're my handiwork, my masterpiece. If you know what God says about you, when he made you, when he finished, he says, you're good. You're good. This is what God says. And lastly, don't give up. Finish the race. If I have to crawl across the finish line, I'll crawl. If I have to be drug across the finish line by one of you, I'll let you drag me. If I have to be like the man who had friends around him, whereby when they went, he was paralyzed, he couldn't move, his friends took him in his bed. And when the crowd was there and they couldn't get through, they said, we'll lift him up to the roof. And they tore a hole in the roof. And they lowered him down in front of Jesus. And because of their faith, he was healed. Y'all follow me. If you're going to finish, make sure you have the right people around you. Because there are going to be some moments in life where you're paralyzed and you don't know what to do. Which way to go and how to go there. And it's going to take some powerful people around you to say, my sister, we are going to be all right. Not I, not you, but we are going to be all right. We got this thing. We will finish together. Oh, Jesus. Don't give up. Finish the race. Finish the race. Finish the race. So that when it's all said and done, as we see in Matthew 25, 21, Matthew 25, 21, that word says, well done, good, and faithful servant. You have been faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of me. Come and share your master's happiness. I don't know about you, but I'm looking so forward when the time comes. Amen. I ain't trying to rush nothing. But when the time comes, I'm looking so forward to being able to share in my master's happiness. How will you finish? How will you finish? Let us pray. Dear God, we pray right now.